Hello ladies and gentlemen, it's Mike here at Game From Scratch, and let's say you wanted to create an RPG. You wanted a game engine specifically for that. If you are looking to create a JRPG, or Japanese-style RPG, you have been in luck for decades now. Like, going back to maybe 40 years at this point in time, we've had RPG Maker in various different forms for creating this style of games. Things like the early Dragon Warriors or Final Fantasy, but what if you wanted to make more of a Western-style retro RPG? Something, say, like Ultima 4 or 5, or the early Fall out games, that kind of thing, well, you were out of luck. Although, there is an option now, and it is called either Retro RPG Creator or Eldiron. It's got two names. I'm not sure which one you want to refer to it as. When you build it, it is called Eldiron. You go to the website, it is called Retro RPG Creator. And this is all about creating uh, early or late 80s, early 90s style games. So you can see, if you look at this screenshot right here, and we're going to see this in action in just a second, this is very much exactly the Ultima 4 or Ultima 5 look. It also has the ability to do early Quake style levels uh, for that kind of, so if you're doing like, say, early Eye of the Beholder, that kind of game, it's got those capabilities as well. Although, to be honest, I haven't had much luck with that. So we're going to focus mostly on the 2D aspects of this program. So this is uh, either Eldiron or RPG Creator. Uh, it is all about creating those style games. Again, there is a 2D map creator for 3D maps like Doom style creation. Uh, and then on top of that, you've got full tile set creation. It is cross-platform, so Windows, Linux, and Mac OS. It is open source, by the way. The source code itself is using the Rust programming language. There is a bunch of 3D functionality. Again, I did not have great luck with that. And then on top of that, uh, there is programming options, both Python and this visual node system and shader system there as well. Uh, there is documentation, and you're going to want to dig into the documentation because it is it's a little obtuse learning how to use this. Things that you take for granted these days, things like tool tips. Yeah, you might be missing those. So anyways, we're going to jump in and take a look at this guy. So here you can see this is a sample world. Again, if you played Ultima 4 or Ultima 5, you're going to immediately recognize the style. I'll go ahead and do a quick run of the, the demo game, get an idea of the kind of stuff you could do. So we can, we can move around in the world like so. By the way, I can also use arrow keys to do this. Um, I can interact with objects in the world. For example, this sign over here. I'm going to use the used thing. Uh, and it says, this is the home of Moody. I believe this up here is Moody. So let's go say hi to Moody. So once again, go up to here and we'll use and then click on Moody. And you can see he's a vendor. So I'm going to go ahead and buy a torch and then goodbye. Uh, so now I have a torch. You go to my inventory, you will see it is available there. Uh, and then we've got other code here, like for example, to open this door up. And then we've got combat in place as well. So that's the kind of games that you are creating using this. And this is your tool set. So right away, you're going to see uh, you have a map editor. You can create multiple different regions. For example, here is a dungeon area. Here is the harbor area that we just navigated around. You have full tile maps for placing things into the scene. Again, no tool tips. So have fun figuring out these things. You're going to need the documentation for sure. Uh, you can create... Uh, I believe multiple layers, it might be single. No, you can place items on top of other items, I believe. But here uh, you got animated uh, nodes like that. And then we can come up here and we can just draw in the world. By the way, to delete something, shift click it and it goes away. And then on top of that, you have all of the things that make up your world. So here we see you got a number of entities. We got that orc that's fighting around right here. Let's go back to the select modes. So we're not painting anything. So we have this orc over here uh, as one example. Uh, and I can come up down to here and you notice we have this coding section. So there are a couple of different options when it comes to code. You can drive them via nodes. You can see here you've got your simple uh, group of things down the side here that you can work with. For example, if you needed an action, you drop an action in. Here you can see on startup, uh, so we do a uh, walk in a random, a random walk in a sector, define the parameters, set proximity tracking, add an item, the golden key. You need the golden key, by the way, to open this door. So you'd have to come up here, fight him, kill him, then open that door up. Gives you an idea of how these things work. Proximity warning right there. When he gets close, he runs this code. By the way, this could all be brought over to run as Python instead. So if you're interested, that is the code that is being generated. And you're going to notice the Python is actually much more condensed than the uh, visual code, but it's kind of a, a more exploratory system. If you want to cr create things visually, you can do so. So that is how things ultimately work there. Here is the, the code controlling our player. And once again, the Python code that is generated. So you can work with this visual script, or you can use the Python side of things. Uh, we also have, so example with my player selected right here, 
I have a uh, database of options over here. So here is, it's my player equals true. I have one wealth, strength of 12, dexterity of 10 or whatever. So if I wanted to make myself wealthier, I just basically can edit the stats right there. Same thing here, vendor, there is details about the vendor. And here are details about the orc character. We also have items here, same thing. They've got just a set of attributes attached to them. And then of course they can have their own code as well. So here you can see this is the uh, sign. So when you use the sign, it displays this message as an example. So that is how all of these systems work together. You also have this kind of generalized gear, which seems to be your, your level itself. So basically setting properties for the game and the game world. Uh, so this is gonna set, for example, the, the starting region, uh, region as Harbor. As you remember, we had multiple regions available over here. Uh, and then on top of that, we have our tile set and tile set controls so over here. You can see the tiles, you can set them. Are they blocked? are they not blocking and so on and then you use the tiles to place entities into your world and to create your maps you have module no idea what module does screen this is for your um, on-screen display so when you've got uh, let me see if I can actually get that up. So there, this is your user interface that you saw in action. You got the various different widgets that go together to control your user interface. If you want to customize your user interface, you do it there. Over here, you have asset. Uh, this example, all I have is a font being defined in the asset section. And then you have shader programming here as well. So you do have a full shader system here. Uh, so that's the tiles. Where did shaders go? They're here somewhere. You can bring up shaders down here as well. So that is kind of the um, the gist of the program. Again, uh, it's one of those ones that you're going to have, some, have to invest some time into figuring out just how the heck it works. It's also very much still under development. So you might have to give them some time to get where they want to go. The other thing again that we do have, so the other demo that it ships with is this one. And this is a demonstration of the 3D. And I, for the life of me, can't figure out the 3D aspects of things. So, um, it's a little bit more challenging You see here, the 3D is being built using, let me go over here. Here's our region, here is our map. So you see it's built out of like this top down line graph. Uh, and then you've got the ability to actually, you know, see it in 3D. We've got isometric perspective as well. Uh, you can pan it around, you can zoom in and out. Uh, and then there's also a first person view. I should be able to texture these walls and so on. I don't actually know how to do this, but there's a bunch of functionality here for 3D and then you can create entities and items and so on in the 3D. For example, here, there is a floor light being defined. Um, and then here's the floor light. There are the properties for it. I don't know if there's any code attached to it. No, it doesn't look like it. So it gives you an idea of the tools that are available here. You can create your map basically by drawing in 2D and is it extruded up the way that we used to do things back in the Doom era. Again, it, these should be textured walls and so on. I don't know what I'm doing wrong here. I focused mostly on the 3D aspects of things, which by the way, come in here, you can check out that hideout 2D and that will give you the 3D view. But what you're going to want to do is switch back here and make sure you switch back to the 2D view or it gets very, very confusing very quick. So ladies and gentlemen, that is a quick hands-on with Eldiron or our, a retro RPG creator. Again, there is documentation here that walks you through. So this is what your levels should look like textured. Uh, and again, you just design them visually top down like you used to do in old school CAD. And there is documentation on how to set everything up and work with everything. And all of your tooling here is documented and you're gonna wanna go through this. Like I said, there's no tool tips. So it's a little bit obtuse figuring out how some of these things actually work. Now, again, mentioned earlier on, this is an open source project, which is quite cool. If you like what he's doing here, drop him a star. Uh, it's um, been around for a while. Again, uh, what's the last, the longest commit? At least two years, as you can see right here for in terms of uh, there. Uh, I don't know how exactly how old this project is, but as you can see, 96.2% uh, created in Rust. It does run on Windows, Linux, and Mac OS. You may notice I'm demonstrating this on Mac OS. Uh, that's because I had some kind of a bug with the Windows side of things. It needed a Rust um, development stack installed to run. And then I had some issues with the menu. So just know this is an under development project. So you're going to have those kind of growing pains. You're gonna have little issues with it for sure. Uh, but if you're willing to put up with them, this is a kind of a one of a kind program, very niche. But if you're trying to channel that um, late 80s, early 90s RPG vibe, 
that is exactly what this project is setting out to do. Again, completely open source, completely free. Uh, and again, if you've been looking for a Western style um, alternative to RPG Maker, this is it. RPG, uh, retro RPG creator. So it's available at Eld Iron. So E E E. Sorry, E L D I R O N dot com. Something a little bit different today, but very cool in my opinion. All right, let me know what you think. I will talk to you all later. Goodbye.